what we have to do is we had to find a grounded approach and we have to find an emotionally real approach to it. And we have to kind of tap into these characters and feel like what makes us relate as an audience to them. And I think we can all relate to just following our dreams and the positivity of it. So let's start with the, let's start with the questions straight away. Uh, so my first question, and maybe that's one you've heard already, is uh, how familiar were you with One Piece before being called to work on live action? I wasn't familiar with it at first. Um, but what I found out when I spoke to my son about it was that he had read the whole thing in lockdown. So when I said to him there was a show coming up about a rubber pirate, he was like, One Piece? And that reaction, that face made you realize, oh, oh, this is really big. This is really big. So, and then all my nephews are huge fans. So I've been told in no uncertain terms that I was not allowed to mess it up as oh. well as <laughs> to mess it up for Oda. Sure. Um, and then I guess my follow-up question is how are it was to catch up with such a vast lore and uh, such a long running series. I'm sure your nephews and son helped you, but was it hard? It is hard. And obviously I have to understand the episodes that I was doing, but we had Matt Owens and Steve Maida, who are huge One Piece fans as our showrunners. And obviously, you know, Oda's looked at the scripts and I just went back to the manga. So I just kind of had to look at how he writes how he draws his amazing frames and and I loved his I love things like the front pages they always have these beautiful images of all the straw hats hanging out together and then you've got fan questions at the back so you know just absorb as much as I can I mean I, I wouldn't test me on a thousand chapters though well there's more than that so. <laughs> but okay. yeah uh, so well, of course this is not your first uh, foray into large-scale TV productions after you worked on Doctor Who season 12, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but how would you say uh, your experience uh, with One Piece compares to that? Very simply put, it's bigger. It's just bigger. I mean, the world of One Piece is amazing. Our sets, um, we shot in Cape Town in South Africa with Film Africa, which was wonderful. Um, huge. The ships are like life size. When I saw the Baratier, I was very jealous that I wasn't shooting on that. But it's it's a, it's just a massive, a massive set, massive show, massive IP. And and I think what's helpful is that I've dealt, you know, I've 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 dealt with IP that means a lot to its fans before. And so you know that you have to get it right, that there are a lot of people who are so passionate about One Piece that you want to make sure that they feel like you've done it justice, as well as Oda, obviously. Oh, uh, speaking of uh, the episodes that you have uh, directed, uh, this was the two episodes in which Usopp joins the crew. Now, uh, this character uh, really uh, stands out among the many tropes of the shonen genre to which One Piece belongs to, right? Because Usopp is a liar, he's a coward, and yet he captivated fans and became actually one of the most popular One Piece characters. So what do you think of Usopp and uh, what traits of the character do you try to highlight in your episodes? I think with Usopp, it's the loyalty. You know, he has huge loyalty to Kaya. And also we've got this backstory of um, what happened to him and why he wants to be a pirate and why he wants to go out and join a, you know, to join the Luffy's gang. Um, and I think, I think, we, you know, it's, it's with the whole, the whole show, it's all about your dreams. It's all about Usopp's dream is to go out and be a brave warrior of the seas. And Luffy's there to make everybody feel like they should follow their dreams. So I think with Usopp, he's got such a big heart and he's so inventive and so creative and his stories are so wonderful. And he's brave even when he's terrified. And you can't help but like that. Plus the actor Jacob is lovely. The next question again is one that you've probably heard a lot and you're going to hear a lot more, I think, uh, from fans especially, which is, how much freedom did the, the, the directors and the writers had to change the original story? 
only as much as Oda gave us because everything went through Oda. So, for example, um, I had a scene where Queen R and Young Zorro are fighting, and we shot that originally, and Oda watched it, and he said, I don't want the kendo masks on them. We want it reshot. So we went back to Cape Town, and we shot it again. Um, and it was better, and it was good. And so we everything goes through him. So, you know, you you're it's incredibly creative IP, so you're constantly – trying to do justice but you know find the most beautiful visual way to tell his stories but at the same time you know you have to go within the parameters of the show and besides the one that you just described uh did you have uh, a lot of interaction with oda and if so uh, what kind of insights were you able to gather from him and then bring into your own uh episodes sadly i didn't get to meet him But Matt Owens, Matt Owens is, is chatting to him. So I would, I, w- I would still like to meet him. So if he would like me to come to Japan, I'm free. This show is adapting, of course, the earliest uh, part of One Piece, right? In that early part, uh, One Piece had a very strong comedy element. And the characters in the manga, they were basically walking and talking gags at times, right? Now, in the live action, The comedy is not completely gone, of course, but the characters and the story are a lot more serious. Uh, now, for your episodes, how involved were you in setting this different tone? How much of your input went into this different tone, into moving away from the comedy? And uh, why uh, do you think that the more serious element took precedent? I think a lot of that was decided before I arrived. You know, with the, the scripts are written by the showrunners, Matt and Steve. But to be fair, I, I really latch on to any humor that I find because I think it's really, it keeps things bubbling along. Um, and I think there is quite a lot of humor in, in my episodes. It's not an outright comedy. But I love the fact that Zorro has no sense of direction. You know, he's badass, but he doesn't know which way he's going. And he's got great one-liners. So I think it's always a, it's a balancing act of the tone. But obviously, I get the scripts that I'm given, and then I interpret them tonally to, to what it should be. And I think, hopefully, even though we've got these kind of thrilling horror elements in mind, we do puncture it with humor and the lightness of tone. Yes. And in fact... Uh, for your episodes, you uh, the the tone is yes a little horrory because the big confrontation with the black cat pirates, which in the original story happens in the open, but uh, in your episodes it all happens inside. Uh, almost it's almost like a haunted mansion setting, right? A lot of fun. I mean, an amazing sets that we got to play with. Huge huge building but yeah i mean that's always fun to kind of use the camera to kind of um you know create tension and anticipation and the re- the reveals it's super fun as a genre kind of project for a director the live action anime genre is a very tricky one as uh, evidenced by the responses to the death note movie the cowboy bebop show So uh, did you feel any kind of reservations about exploring this genre when you were approached for this? And if so, how did you overcome them? I've watched a few, you know, the anime and lots of different anime. I mean, I'm, I'm a big Studio Ghibli fan, but you can't make actors do those big actions and faces that we can get in the anime. So it wouldn't work. It's just so, you know, that is obviously a discussion we have. We can't have, you know, the faces don't get that big. And it would be it would be really awkward. And I think it would throw everybody out of the story. Um, so I, I think what we have to do is we had to find a grounded approach and we have to find an emotionally real approach to it. And we have to kind of tap into these characters and feel like what makes us relate as an audience to them. And I think we can all relate to just following our dreams and the positivity of it is key, especially now in our times. Does that yes. answer your question? Absolutely, it does. And I have to say that from what I have seen, you have succeeded in that. 
because yes, uh, grounded is exactly the word I would have used because as, as a huge One Piece fan watching the show, I was uh, surprised by how real the characters felt. I did not expect that to work with real people, but now I am seeing real people into the story. And even if it's a different story, because of course, as you said, you cannot have like real people do the, the things that anime characters do, it works in that way. So uh, job well done. And we tried our best. We really, really tried our best. We just hope everybody likes it. Oh yeah, the, the most common feedback that I've seen is that the show really uh, transmits your passion and how much how devoted you were to the source material. So yes, hopefully uh, as many fans as possible share <laughs> their opinion with us.